Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time. We are entering Cape Canaveral. Today we will be visiting NASA's Kennedy Space Center. I am so excited. Haven't been here since 1998. So glad that we can visit together. We can all visit together today. There is much ahead. Check out the rockets behind the main entrance. I am so excited to explore this place. We are go for launch. This clock right here is said to be the most viewed time clock in the world, second to Big Ben in London. No launch today, but if there was, this clock would be counting down. Kennedy Space Center actually was first known as Spaceport USA, but was renamed after John F. Kennedy. I have not purchased the ticket yet, so the self-service tickets booth it's about to come in handy. Looks like one day admission, adult 57, child 47. And that was super simple. Here's my ticket. Oh my gosh. I'm already blown away. I'm so fascinated by space and spacecraft. This is the rocket garden. Let's take a look at some of these. This is right after the main entrance, right next to the Heroes and Legends United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. The Line is packed to get in there. We're gonna go start in the rocket garden. I found this map on the Kennedy Space Center website so I can tell you exactly what's going on. This rocket here was the Mercury Atlas. Still is, just sitting here in the rocket garden. Check out those engines, the blasters down there. I believe we just saw one of those up close at the Florida Air Museum. Beyond the queue line to the Astronaut Hall of Fame is the Mercury Redstone rocket. If you look, Way up there, that's the actual module where the astronaut would travel. And there's actually one down here on the ground that you can climb inside. And check this out, wide open, just for us, the space capsule. Not much to it. Oh man, it's so small, I don't even know if I can get in here. Actually, I think I was in here about 22 years ago, but it was a lot easier. Holy cow! I'm sitting on the seat upside down that's actually where you put your back because you're launching up so i'm backwards and i'm, I'm barely barely in here look at this oh wow now my back sir okay rockets from left to right juno one delta juno two this big one right here is the atlas agena and then that one right there, Gemini Titan 2. They just made an announcement that they do have tours for the rocket garden. I believe they start every hour. The Atlas rocket gave us the power to reach orbit, but it was the Agena on top that bridged the huge gap between getting there and getting down to work. The Agena was powered by an engine we could turn on and off at will. The Delta was the fourth configuration of the Thor Ava launch vehicle. It launched on March 11th, 1960. It held the Pioneer 5. It was a Delta rocket that launched this thing. No, that's no moon. Not a space station either. That's a television satellite. And the Delta rocket in 1960 launched the first live television signal to cross an ocean. You can hear in the background the actual rocket garden tour going on. Explorer 1 launched from across the Banana River at what today is called Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Looks like there's some construction over here. This is blocked off. There's several engines back there and they're building a new building. But you can still see the end, the tip of the rocket over there. It's so cool to be standing in front of the, a replica of the rocket. Obviously these weren't launched because the rockets actually, most of them, blow up. And here's the bottom of the Saturn rocket. Notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thrusters. Can you imagine what would happen if it, those things went off right now? I'd be blown away, I'd be melted. On June 3rd, 1965, Ed White cracked the hatch on Gemini 4 and took America's first spacewalk. And there's a picture of that moment right here. As we stand before 
a Gemini, or a replica of a Gemini. There you go. I'll pan up the rocket, the Gemini rocket, there you go. You can see it. And at the top up there, the space capsule. That took two people, only two people. And here is a replica over here of that Gemini space module. And there it is, there's people climbing in there right now to take a photo. A little bigger than the space module I just climbed into. This was for two people, just a little bit bigger. All right, exiting the rocket garden, moving along. There is so much to do here at Kennedy Space Center. We're just going to go this way. The mural painted on this wall is of the International Space Station. All the flags of the countries that have inhabited the space station right there to the right or down below. Fun fact, when I was here in 98, they allowed us to walk through a portion of the space station being constructed so we could say we all had been a part or on the International Space System. So there you go. I've been on a portion of that, just not in space. So to the right is the Rocket Garden Cafe, then the Universe Theater, Milky Way Ice Cream Shop, the Astronaut Training Experience, and then down there to the left, bus tours and some more around the corner, just kind of putting things into perspective for you guys. All right, this is awesome. Let's check out the Mars Rover. Wow, that is definitely a spacecraft. Looks like it's right out of the movie. Look at the wheels. That's awesome. I'm gonna go around there where those people are. Here's a side view of the Rover. I'm waiting my turn to go up there and read these signs. Look at those wheels. See, we can put those on cars here. They figured it out, NASA figured it out. The Mars Rover Vehicle Navigator, MRVN, would be operated by humans as part of a long-term Martian settlement supplementing a human-friendly artificial habitat. So this is more of just like a concept vehicle, but it's ready to go. Mars Facts, 142 million miles from the sun, 4,220 miles in diameter, 25 degree axis tilt, 687 Earth days in a year, 24 hours, 37 minutes, and a soul. I just learned that the Spanish word that means sun, soul, is the word for a Martian day. So a day in Mars is called a soul. In front of the entrance to the bus tours is a lunar rover over here. I don't know if this one's been to the moon or not. I'd say not because it's in such great shape, but there's an old lunar rover. Check out the controls there, just a joystick. Ladies and gentlemen, wait for it. On display here, spinning for everyone to see. Presented by Lockheed Martin, the Orion Space Capsule, which is new, it's newer. As we know, NASA discontinued the space shuttle missions. This is an Orion rocket right here. That space capsule would fit there. This big purple building here with the holiday tree in front of it, Kennedy Space Center's IMAX Theater. I believe they're currently playing Asteroid Hunters 3D. Journey to Mars, Explorers Wanted. I'm gonna check that out. I've always been fascinated about Mars ever since I watched Total Recall. Now it's time to get our butts to Mars. The Mars mission team needs you. Sign me up, I'll go to Mars. Explorers Wanted, hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. Okay, I think I still wanna go, I don't know. Opens up into a big room, a lot of stuff, a lot of information on the walls. This room opens up a bit more right after that spacecraft. Welcome to Mars. I can't believe my eyes aren't like blowing up here. This display says meet the original rovers. This is the Spirit Rover. Launch date June 10th, 2003 out of Cape Canaveral. Destination, Gus of Crater on Mars. Landed January 3rd, 2004. Obviously this is a replica. And here's a replica of the Sojourner Rover. Launch date December 4th, 1996. Right here from Cape Canaveral. Launched with the Delta II rocket. It reached its landing date was July 4th, 1997. I like the sign here, bots before boots. Put the bots on the ground and then we send the boots. The Ingenuity helicopter, this is a technology demonstration to test powered flight on another world for the first time. And right there's the first space helicopter, a replica of it. Ingenuity, which will be launched from this same mission, the Perseverance rover, which is going to Mars to study 
microorganisms, I believe. So cool. All right, that was fun. Still so much to do and see at Kennedy Space Center. There is still much ahead, my friends. Noticing a lot of places to eat inside Kennedy Space Center. I like this old retro looking sign, Orbit Cafe. Inside the building to the right, the space shuttle Atlantis. But first you have to walk in between these rockets that would have launched NASA's space shuttle program. Cool to take a close look at this setup. Notice how the rockets are attached there to the tank. And of course that all breaks apart as it launches into the atmosphere. All right, getting closer, we will start with a 12 minute presentation, a little video. Building 36? I didn't even know there was a building 36. It must be important, everyone's here. We have propulsion, aerothermal, flight dynamics. Anyone know why we're here? For this. Good morning. We're going to create America's next spacecraft. It's going to launch like a rocket and land like an aeroplane, and it's going to be reusable. The president's message said you go forward this morning on a daring enterprise and you carry the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you. And astronaut John Young, the commander of the mission, replied, that's a right fine speech. We sure appreciate it. And the door is open. big this is. Oh my gosh. Got my back against the wall. This is pretty much the widest angle I can get you right now. We're gonna climb up here. There's gonna be a better view up there of Atlantis. And over here, looks like there's a satellite. Wow, this is awesome. Going up these steps here. A lot of people in here. But still enough room to maneuver around and see everything. So you're looking at a Hubble spacecraft, a giant telescope that the shuttle missions took to space. And that was what was inside there. So big, I can't put it all into frame. There you go. Wow. This is amazing. As this guy scared me. I looked up and he was staring right at me, kind of startled me. That is so cool. Look at that space here. I am just in awe, guys. I, the last time I was here was 98, so this wasn't here. My mind is blown with how large the spacecraft is. The actual flight deck, the cockpit, and out here is the orbital docking system, the ODS, and here's the arm that would swing out. Notice the cameras on there. Look at that. You're falling at 17,500 miles per hour. What do you do? And this shows you what that arm does. The astronaut right there at the end, I believe he's locked. Yep, locked into place by his feet. It's kind of a simulation up there, this giant screen of the shuttle orbiting the Earth. Just going slowly. You can see it. The shuttles were built to hold satellites, planetary probes, space telescopes, pieces of the International Space Station. I'm about to get in line over here to walk through this replica of a flight deck. So it's split in half. Check it out. Here's the cockpit, the controls. Wow. Here are the controls. Look at this. I'm manning the Atlantis. Coming in hot. And this looks like it would control the arm or perhaps something on the cargo deck. Looking out the back window. Look at that, all these buttons. Well, my friends, if you've ever wondered how they go in space, that's how they go in space. 
You gotta hold yourself down as close as we can get to the flight deck, to the cockpit. Wow. 33 missions. 26 years of service. Used over and over again. Look at this door. Wow, this is this is so awesome. Now standing before the tail end of the Atlantis. Notice the size of those thrusters. There's actually one of the engines right here behind us. Three of these stick out of the bottom of Atlantis, out of the shuttle, up close. The space shuttle main engines were colder than Pluto, but their exhaust was hotter than the molten metal 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The inside of the engine's temperature is a look up into the thrusters. Just a small hole compared to what is powering the, the rocket. 37 million horsepower. So the back portion is the power head, and the big portion is the nozzle. Here's a better look at the power head, the actual motor, the engine, the jet engine. The space shuttle has over 2.5 million parts. It just blows my mind how big it is and how powerful those rockets were. In this shot, just a portion of all the tiles all those tiles make up the body of the spacecraft. And underneath the space shuttle, downstairs, there is so much more to see. This is more for the kiddos, but come inside and explore the International Space Station. This little replica of, of the replica, but I think it's just for the kiddos, just to play it. Something going on over here. The sign says, land like the shuttle. Oh my gosh, it's a giant slide. You can slide all the way down into the bottom half of the museum. I think I'm going to do this. Yeah. Okay, it's my turn. We're going to launch off just like that shuttle. Right there. Don't laugh at my hole in my sock. I need to do my laundry. Whoa! Oh my gosh! That was fun. Wow. Now that was fun. Welcoming us into the bottom half of the museum. The Atlantis above. Here's a flight suit jacket worn by John Young of the Columbia Space Shuttle Endeavor. And here's another flight suit. Right there. Doesn't say whose it is, but very cool to see. And here's a 1 15th scale replica of Atlantis. Look at that. So here's the building out back here, the vehicle assembly building. I'm pretty sure you've, you've probably seen it before, but you see the, the flag on the side of the building? Imagine a city bus on the red, one of those red stripes. It will fit in there perfectly. This is the size of the road. So that kind of puts this building to proportion how large it is to build spacecraft. And it is said that it has its own atmosphere, so it can rain in there. And here's some photos from the assembly of Atlantis all those years ago. And here's the landing gear setup for the shuttle. Not your typical tires, rubber. Almost solid, Michelin. And these are 46.25 by 16.8 by 21.5. Those are huge. Up there on that balcony is where that International Space Station for the kiddos was, where they're crawling through. And look how it kind of extends from this angle. It looks like it's actually the International Space Station. Oh, wow. Hope they're not afraid of heights. Don't look down, kids. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Look at this Airstream, the NASA Airstream RV. This Astrovan carried astronauts to the launch pad for training and launches for 27 years, starting with the ninth space shuttle mission, STS-9. And there's a photo of some astronauts inside a modified 1983 Airstream Excella. Among its special features are the ventilator units used to circulate cool air through the astronauts' bulky orange launch and entry suits. And imagine all the astronauts that flew in the space shuttle missions, imagine how many stepped off the back here and their next ride was into space. That's amazing to think about. There's the inside. See all the way up into the front part. And directly above me, above the airstream, is the Hubble. All kinds of simulators over here. Kind of reminds me of the bottom of spaceship Earth. Let's see if we can simulate some space operation. 
That's some fun. Let's give this one a try. Working with robotic arm. Orbit station lighting on. Switch to RCD mode. Sample on. Check. All right, let's hit the red button because we, we all like the red button. Move the end of the arm toward the glowing target. I'm trying to go, I can't go, I'm trying to go left or right, but it's not really working. There's me out there from another angle, another camera angle. Getting closer. Kind of got to give it a little tap. Just tap it in, tap it in, and then tap it. Go to your home, ball. All right. Now down. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Well, that was fun, guys. Look, the sun has come out. It's awfully beautiful out here. Still much to see here at Kennedy Space Center. Bus tours. Now it's time to check out the bus tours. I was in Atlantis for a couple hours. I hope I didn't miss the tour. Not looking good. Join us for a guided tour 10 and one. It is way past one, it's almost three. Okay, I opened that door and this is not what I expected to see. I thought we were going towards like the buses. This is the area where you dine with an astronaut. You can have food with an astronaut. So check that out on the website if you're interested. And this is where you do it. And by the looks of it, there will be no bus tour for us today. Well, darn. Have to come back, though. And I definitely will be back. Love this place. Having a great time. This is a great place to spend the day after Christmas, that's for sure. Over there is the Atlantis building, which we were just in. How about a look inside the world's largest space shop? Right through here. I came straight to the top of the steps so you could see how large this place is. I can see why it's the world's largest space store. These water bottles are awesome. Kind of vintage looking. Look at this. Of course, there's an Apollo rocket on the back. Check out these cooking aprons. This one says, I need my space. And that one says, failure is not an option. Just below these Astro mitts. Those are pretty cool. Oh my gosh, Snoopy in space. Snoopy always reminds me of my Beagle Bella. Your choice. Blue or orange flight suit? I think I like the orange flight suit because it reminds me of the X-Wing flight suit. All right, now it's time to enter the Heroes and Legends, the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame presented by Boeing. And it looks like there's a bit of a wait, but not as long as it was when we first walked inside. Please hold on to your 3D glasses. All right, piling in. I don't see any 3D glasses here, though. We kindly ask that you exit using the doors located at the rear of this theater. Also, as a reminder, we kindly ask that you refrain from any cell phones display of all the rockets that are outside or external video lighting. Thank you. So, no need for 3D glasses anymore. They modified the presentation so you don't need the glasses. But I think I am who I am today because of my father. My father was a hero of mine. There will be no 3D glasses. That was an awesome presentation there. I noticed the robot from Lost in Space is over here, but it closed down. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. He's in there. the Astronaut Hall of Fame. Notice this display here teaches you of all the missions, the different missions. Mercury, 1958, 1963, and then Gemini, 1961 to 1966, and then the Apollo missions, 61 to 1972. And right behind me, a Mercury Atlas rocket. Check out the man capsule there on top. The first one I got inside, outside, in the beginning of the video, that's that one. It looks like we're about to crawl downstairs, see what else we can find. A hero is dot dot dot. What is a hero to you?
A hero is inspired. Check it out. Inspiration. Comic books. A lot of people get inspiration from comic books and science fiction novels. Escape on Venus. Edgar Rice Burroughs. Assorted Buck Rogers toy pistol circa 1930 to 1940. Check it out. This is an old Buck Rogers toy still in the box. Communications outfit. Looks like a couple of radios there. The hero is passionate and curious. Frank. Astronaut Frank Borman's varsity letter and football jersey. And here's astronaut Buzz Aldrin's varsity letter and his pennant from his high school. Camp Trout Lake Pennant. And there is a trophy he won. Looks like uh, track and field. You gotta be tenacious. Astronaut Deke Slayton's World War II bomber jacket. Look at all the bombs he dropped. And then also there's uh, there's his knife. Mercury survival knife. Heroes are disciplined and also confident in what they can do. This is pretty cool. Check out all these flight helmets. Some there. And some there. It's pretty awesome. Wow. That's John Glenn's flight goggles. A replica of the Mercury Mission Control Room. Friendship 7, 1962. Very cool to see this, like you'd see in Apollo 13, or we saw in Apollo 13. The mission Control Room. That was pretty awesome. Wow. Oh, it looks like there's a launch going off. There it goes. So awesome. This sign right here was once displayed at the Mercury Control Center. It greeted all the astronauts, engineers, and press as they entered for the launches at Cape Canaveral. Heroes are courageous. Look at this. This flight suit. Wow. It's an original NASA flight suit. This is the actual spacesuit worn by Gus Grissom during the July 21st, 1961 suborbital flight. This is amazing. Pretty cool. Original spacesuit worn by Gus Grissom. And in the middle there is Gus Grissom next to John Glenn and Alan Shepard, the first astronaut team. Heroes are selfless. This United States flag reached space on America's first piloted space flight with Alan Shepard aboard a Mercury Redstone in 1961 and on its 100th piloted space flight in 1995 on Space Shuttle Atlantis during STS-71. Old Glory here was in space. Wow, it's, it's incredible. And finally, we enter the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame, greeted by a statue of Alan Shepard Jr on the first space flight. I mean, right there. It's pretty cool. And here it is, this is where it starts. This is amazing, all these astronauts. Just gonna pan the camera a little bit. Take all day to call all these names off. I can't show everyone, so I'm just kind of picking out some astronauts at random. Astronaut Bunny Dunbar was inducted in 2013. And below all the astronauts' names, they have their space missions. The badges from their space missions shows you when they went up to space. And there's Jerry Ross and Kent Rominger. As we saw on the outside of the building, the same photo right here. Well, this was awesome. Look at it. Isn't it awesome in here? Wow, very futuristic. Really cool to visit the Hall of Fame. That's the end of the Hall of Fame, presented by Boeing. Before we head out the exit. The exit, back into the Rocket Garden. One last look at the Rocket Garden before we leave. Our mission is accomplished. That was such a fun day. I had such a great time out here. Time just went by. I've been out here for five hours and it felt like an hour. Time flies when you're having fun. Speaking of fun, I hope you guys had fun today. Hope you had fun watching. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. I am Tampa J. 
And even though this video is over, there is still much ahead. Hope to see you next time, guys. Thanks for visiting Kennedy Space Center with me. NASA here at Cape Canaveral. Wouldn't be the same without you. All right, bye-bye. See you next time. There's much ahead.